Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. God bless you this morning. God bless you this morning. Hey, this is the day that the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. Come on. You know what I'm going to ask you to do this morning? I'm going to stop. ask you to stop what you're doing. Hey, stop and share, and then we're going to get on into the service. Amen? Come on and share this morning. excited about what the word has for us on today. God is going to do something awesome and I hope you expect it. I'm expecting. Hey, I want the whole house to be expecting because God has got something to say to us today. I believe that Pastor Grimsley got a word just from God. So this morning as we prepare, let's get our minds. Come on, let's get our atmosphere. Let's get it set. Let's get it ready for the word of God because guess what? When the word of God comes and we're expecting, we get changed. Somebody say change. We could change. Come on. Come on. This is the day that the Lord has made. We're going to rejoice and be glad on it. It's got my name on it. Yes. With my name on it. Yes. Come on. God got a blessing for you, 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 and you. Come on. Thank you for meeting us this morning in the studio. We are in the studio this morning. Amen. I'm glad that y'all met us on this morning. Hey. I'm so glad to be sitting before you this morning, but I'm just here to get ready, get you ready for Pastor Grimsley to come. Pastor Grimsley has a word for us this morning, and on behalf of him, we welcome you this morning to Faith Victory Christian Center, truly a church like none other. Come on, we are building lives of faith. You ought to tell yourself, come on, they're building lives of faith. We're wanting you to get stronger and stronger in the word of God because when the adversary comes and when things come in life, guess what? We want you to be able to fight and we want you to be able to fight the good fight of faith. Amen? The good fight of faith. So we want to build you stronger and stronger. Good morning, uh, my cousin Nikki, Alisa Frazier from Dothan, Alabama. Good morning to you. Welcome to Faith Figure Christian Center. Good morning. Come on. God's got a blessing. Good morning, Carla Gibson. Good morning. Good morning. I remember here in um, Huntsville area. Good morning. Good morning. Come on. God's got a blessing for you with your name on it. Come on. Here we go. With my name on it. Yes. Yes. Come on. He's got a blessing for me with my name on it. Yes. Come on. The devil can't stop what God has in plan for us. Come on. He can't stop the blessings. He can't undo what God has already started and what he's going to do. Come on. That ought to make us real excited this morning. It makes me excited because I know that God got something in store just for me. He got something in store just for you. Put your name on it. And can't nobody do anything about it. I don't care what they try to do. I don't care what they try to say. I don't care what kind of plans they try to do against you. Come on. God's got a blessing just for you this morning. Yeah. Come on. We got two minutes, two minutes, which that's right, with my name on it. You better say it. Come on, declare it this morning from the north, the south, the east, and the west. Can you declare that this morning that God got a blessing with your name on it? God's got a blessing. Come on, with your name on it. Yes. Come on. God's got a blessing. God's got a blessing. Yes, that makes me excited. We're getting ready. Come on, we're getting ready. With 
what have you been believing God for? Come on, what have you been standing in faith for? You got to believe that God got a blessing with your name on it. Come on. He said we don't have to wait till the battle is over. We can shop before. Come on, we can shop before it manifests. Because we believe in that God is going to do the exceedingly, the abundantly, and above all that we can ask or even think this morning. God's got a blessing. I believe that this morning. Tell your neighbor. God's got a blessing. God's got a blessing. If you're in the house by yourself this morning, you talk to your own self. God's got a blessing. Yes. God's got a blessing. He's got a blessing with your name on it. He said that we should be the head and not the tail. Above and not beneath. The lender and not the borrower. I don't care what it looks like this morning. I don't care what your bank account looks like this morning. He said you should be the lender and not the borrower. Come on. You should be blessed in the city. You should be blessed in the fields. You should be blessed when you're coming out and when you're going in. That's good news this morning. Amen. Hallelujah. With my name on it. You ought to get up and dance and give God a jig this morning. Woo. With my name on it. I'm excited. I'm excited. Come on, as we get ready to prepare for the word of God. Come on, gather yourself. Gather your hearts and your mind. God got a word just for us this morning. Did you go ahead and tag somebody this morning? Did you go ahead and share this morning? And tell them, hey, the live is on. Look, I did it. Did you go ahead and tell somebody the live is on? The live is on. We get ready to go live. We are live. The, path, the word of God is getting ready to come. And I'm ready. I'm ready. With my name on it. Yes, good morning, good morning. Come on, good morning to the north. Good morning to the south. Good morning to the east and the west. Good morning, Margaret. Good morning, our goddaughter here in the Huntsville area. Good morning to you. Good morning. Amen. Amen. We'll get ready. Get ready. Get ready. Get ready. Come on. It is church time. It is church time. It is church time. So let us pray. Father, we thank you this morning. We thank you for your word this morning. We thank you for what you're about to do in this place. Not only in this place, but what you're about to do in the north, the south, the east, and the west. We thank you now that every heart is conducive to receive the word of God. And we thank you now as Pastor Gr Grimsley get ready to come, that his heart is overflowing with the word of God. That God uses his lips to tell us what thus said the Lord. That come on, that not only will he be blessed, but we'll be blessed. Our house will be blessed. Our fields will be blessed. Our wallets and our purses will be blessed. Our children will be blessed this morning. So we're pulling on the Holy Spirit this morning to come in and do just what he wants to do. I declare that in your house this morning. I declare that on your job this morning. I declare that in your space this morning. That you allow God to come in with your heart being conducive to speak to you right where you are. And that the word will find you right where you are. So let's get ready. God bless you this morning. Let's get ready for the word of God. The next voice that you're going to hear will be our very own Pastor Orlando Grinsley. Well, God bless you. Amen. Praise be to God. I don't know about y'all, man, but I'm excited. Amen. We thank God for Pastor Vanessa. Amen. Open up for us. Amen. Hey, Jamil, God bless you over there at ATL. Amen. I don't know about you, but I am so vitally excited. Amen. About today's word. Amen. I got to get it out and into your life on today. Amen. And I promise you, you're not going to be disappointed. Amen. So therefore, we're speaking to the north 
the south, the east, and the west, and we're telling it to give up and hold, not back, amen? No good thing, God says, he will withhold from them who walks uprightly, amen? So I thank God for you, amen. Today is, I'm telling you, really special. Listen, we're starting all week, amen? And believe me, we have a word of God that's going to be a true blessing into your life, amen? So you want to get your notepads, all that stuff together, your iPads, your paper, whatever you got to get, but you got to get this word because I'm I'm telling you, I'm excited about it, amen, and it's going to be a blessing unto your life, amen. So listen, let me pray real quick, amen, and we're going to jump inside of the word of God. I thank God for you, amen. I see everybody out there, amen. Uh, I think we got some dope in Alabama, ATLs in the house. Of course, we got Huntsville, Meridianville in the house today, amen. Thank God for each and every one of you. And I thank God for you in your respective places. Now, listen, we thank God today. Amen. Let's pray. Father, we thank you today because we are alive. We're on this side of the earth. And God, we thank you that we are the upright living our best life. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Now, Father God, I thank you for the lesson that's coming forth today that's going to be a true anointed blessing into the lives of your people. And God, we always give the Holy Ghost free room to do everything it wants to do in any shape, form, or fashion. And we give you the praise and all the glory from the results that's going to come back from this word. And God, we give you all the praise and all the glory. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank God for you. Amen. God bless you. Amen. I'm telling you, I'm excited, man. I'm telling y'all all day, all night, it's just been a true blessing. Amen. So thank God for you and all your respective places. Amen. Now listen, get your Bibles. Amen. We're going to do our declaration of faith. And uh, we're going to turn to Matthew chapter 16, and we're talking about the kingdom, amen, and kingdom living, but we're talking about the kingdom keys. Everybody shout a key. Oh, yeah, I got some keys for your life today, amen. That's going to make things so much better, amen. God has some secrets that he, want, he wanted to share with you to make sure as a kingdom representative and ambassador of the kingdom of God, he's giving you some key things that he didn't give everybody else. Listen. It's his secrets. I'm going to reveal them, some more of them things into your life today. Amen. Come on, repeat after me. Shout. This is my Bible. I am what it says I am. I can do what it says I can do. I'm a believer and not a doubter. I'm a doer and not just a hearer. And my life is the better after having heard the word of faith. Faith comes by hearing. And hearing and hearing by the word of God. In Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. Amen. We thank God for you. Amen. If you got people uh, right there beside you, amen. Could you smile at, at your neighbors? Amen. Show them your, all your, your 32s, 15 twos, whatever you're working with. Amen. Be proud of what you got. Amen. God bless you. Amen. Praise be to God. Amen. Listen. So excited about this lesson. Amen. We've been teaching in this kingdom living. In other words, we've been talking about uh, God's purpose, God's plan, and God's, God's provision for his people. For his disciples, amen. And we found out, we know a disciple is a student and a learner, amen. And that's what you are. You are a student of the kingdom of God. You are a learner, not just to hear, amen. That's one I've done. You're not just hearing the word of God, but you are a doer, amen. And so in today's lesson, we've been talking about, I think uh, me and Pastor Nessa started off on the, uh, not this past when Wednesday before, talking about kingdom keys. And that's going to be really what we're talking about today. Today, that's going to be a blessing for your life. So let's go to Matthew chapter 16. Don't you go nowhere, verses 18 and 19. Got a lot of information that we want to impart on the inside of your life. And when you begin to uh, get this full understanding of this today, because the Holy Ghost is going to break this down. I like to call it shotgun style. Hey, so you can understand it. Amen. Praise be to God. So Matthew chapter 16. And verses 18 and 19. Now, let's leave, read the word of God. Now, I'll be reading from the Amplified Version just for clarity's sake. Amen. You may have the King James Version, but we're going to end up in the same place. Glory be to God. Amen. So, Matthew 16, starting verse number 18 says, And I say uh, to you that you are Peter, or uh, Petros. Uh, God, again, that's what Peter uh, means, change his name. Uh, and upon this rock, watch this. I will build my church in the gates of, of Hades, or hell, uh, uh, death will not overpower it by preventing the resurrection of Christ and I would give. Can you understand? I would give you, I need you to underline that. I would give you, watch this, authority of the kingdom of heaven 
and whatsoever you bind, forbid, or declare that is improper or unlawful on earth will already be bound in heaven. So whatever you lock up down here on earth, heaven's already got it locked up, amen? And whatever you loose, you permit, or you, you declare lawful, amen, in the earth will already be loosed in heaven, amen? It's all, child is already done. So a lot of things, it's already done. Now God is telling us in this passage of scripture that these are going to be some keys. Oh, look at your neighbor say keys. Now listen, I don't know about you, but if God said I need some keys and I'm part of the kingdom, and you, you know, you, you know, I'm in, I'm in this kingdom. And he said, I'm going to give you keys of the kingdom because you're in the kingdom. I'm going to give you something that's going to help you to function at a whole nother level than what the world works with. So now I don't have to complain about the stuff that goes on in the world because I don't even live by their standards and their ways anyway. I got the keys to the kingdom of heaven in my life here on earth. Oh, that's good news. The good news of the gospel. Amen. Praise be to God that, that the sick are healed. Oh my God, the sick are healed. Are you listening to me? The poor are poor no more. That's good news. Amen. Praise be to God. God says, I'm going to give my people, my, my students, my, my learners. I'm going to give you something that you need for your life. I'm not going to share this with everybody else, but these are my secrets. He's not hiding anything from the other people. All he's saying is, when God says, I'm hiding, I'm giving my secret, he said, because the other folks are not seeking after me anyway. They don't even want to know. So I'm only going to share this. That's why I speak in parables, because the other people are not concerned. They don't want to know. You know what I'm saying? They, 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 they're not following me anyway. They're not students. They're not, in, they're not learners. They're not investing inside the kingdom of God. So they don't even want to know it. So I'm going to stick this in parables, and guess what? I'm going to give you the key to how to function in life. I'm going to show you how the kingdom of heaven functions, but they are keys. And I want to share with you today a lot of the keys that's going to be able to help your life and show you how uh, to function inside of life. When you see these things, you're going, to be, you're going to be amazed. You're going to be amazed. You're going to be like, oh my God, I've been doing all that? And, and here I got the key? Oh, you have access. Shot access. You got access and you got pure authority. Amen. So when the Bible says church, he means really, watch this, the called out warrant. So he says, Listen, I build my church, the called out ones. You're called out. So in other words, when we make Jesus Lord of our life, in other words, I come, in, I, I come inside the kingdom. See, he said, preach the kingdom of God. How I get in this kingdom of God, it's like Nicodemus uh, uh, began to hear Jesus preach, 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 preach. And here he is. Uh, uh, he understood all the Jewish law and all the functions, how it's supposed to go. He said, how can I enter this kingdom that you keep talking about? You keep talking about how great and how you're going to be able to lay hands on the sick. They're going to recover. How you're going to be able to do all these wonderful things. I want to know how can I get inside the kingdom of God? Amen. He said, I can't go back in my mother's room. And that's when God began to show him this is a spiritual birthing. And that's what you are. You have been born again of the spirit. Now that I've been born again of the spirit, watch this, and I've become a part of heaven. Now, God says, I'm going to use you. And inside of this earth that I've given you dominion over, you're going to, whatever it's like in heaven, you're going to be my ambassador and representative. And heaven's going to be here on earth. Shut your mouth. That is enough to make you, if you want to shop, run, and holler, I tell folk, you shop, run, and holler about your dominionship on the earth. I don't hear nothing else. I, I hear everybody preaching about you can do what you want to do, but I'm talking about dominionship. Yeah, that's the key. He's telling you, I've given you dominion. That's what the kingdom of heaven is all about. God restored that. That's what all, that was all predicated on the cross. That's what it's all about. You don't have your price paid for sin, but the whole purpose behind it was not to sin. It was dominion dominion ship. See, I don't have to sin if I got dominion over the thing that's going to cause the sin. So I won't fall because I got dominion over whatever would cause me to fall. What's better than falling and getting up is I don't have to fall. Glory be to God. And this is what he's talking about. The church. Come on, say church. The ones that's been called out. So God is saying the kingdom of heaven will come to earth and he will and, and be built upon man. Now we understand man, Esa, is what we call uh, a spirit, and then uh, uh, man, he's gonna, he took the spirit and put it in dirt, and that's what he called a human, humus, humus man, and that's what he get the spirit, so God calls uh, 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 the, 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 uh, the spirit that's on earth human, got it, so that's where we get that from, so you, you're a spirit being, watch this, possess a body and have a soul, so he calls, he said, I'm gonna give that to you, 
Amen. So God is giving you something for your life. Amen. To prosper you, to make you better. Amen. So he would give us the keys of the kingdom of heaven so we can function just like heaven on earth. That's the purpose. He wants you to be able to function just like on heaven, here on earth. And he says, I'm going to give you keys so that's possible. Now watch this, people. But see, religious or religious reform doesn't teach you this. See, they're teaching you, you got to put up with certain things and, and things are not going to get no better. You always, got to, you always got to struggle. You always got to be in something. If it wasn't for my struggle, I wouldn't be, be who I would be. Now, that's not scripture. Now, it's religious, but it's just not scripture. Got it? Because if, if God required trouble, watch this, y'all. If God required for trouble to teach you, it, it can be a teacher. But God is saying, uh-uh, if you go by my kingdom and I'm going to give you the keys, you ain't got struggle. Now, let's prove that point because I'm going somewhere. Amen. So let's prove that point. Amen. Praise be to God. So let's go to Psalms chapter 34. So let's, so let's prove this point by the, by the word of God. Amen. This is what the kingdom of, of heaven is about. Glory be to God. So in Psalms uh, 34 and 18, because religious reforms or religion would teach you that uh, the struggle is necessary. Problems, which is common to man, it's the only way that you're going to be able to get stronger or uh, uh, be who you are. But that's all got to be a lie based off of scripture. Got it? Psalms 34 and 18. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivered them out of what? Out of them all. Now, wait a minute. Why would God deliver me out of something? He said, it's, going, it's going, going to make me better. That doesn't make any sense. You got it? So God, it, it, it makes no perfect for God to deliver you out of something that he says it's going to make you better. He by will let you just stay in it. Got it? So that, that does not make no sense. Amen. Now, what God is saying, I'm going to give you the keys. I'm going to give you the keys so you'll have dominion over the trouble. Oh, that's good. That's good. Go ahead. Go, let's go again. Let's prove it. Come on. We keep going. Go to 1 Corinthians. Uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 10. Go, go on over there. Let's show you again. That's just one. By two or three scriptures, let every word of God be established. So let's follow this. Let's follow God's context, what God says. Amen. So over here in 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse number 13, watch this. He says, there have been no temptation taking you, but which is what? Coming to man. But God is what? Faithful, who would not suffer you to be tempted above that you are able. But will with the temptation also make a way of escape that you may be able to bury it. Now, this teaches me, tells me, God don't want me to lose all. Because he says, I will not suffer you to be tempted above that which you are able. Oh, oh. So I, 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 I thought, I, see, religious folks tell you, you know what I'm saying? Just, no, no, it's, it's all right. Just stay, just stay in it. No, God says, if I can't overcome it, that's my point. Then, so if I can't overcome it, I can't be in it. But religion teaches you to stay in it. It's, been, it's, it's helping you out now, around the way. It's just making you better. That ain't what the Bible says. That's not what the Bible teaches, amen? The Bible teaches dominionship. I have authority over whatever it is in the earth. I can overcome it, amen? And so this is not about that petty gospel, amen, that they're teaching the sweet by and by, baby. This is something that's going to help your life so you can function at a whole nother level, amen? You're not like the world's way or religious people way. No, you keep dealing with that, baby, but I've overcome that. Glory be to God. The Bible tells me, yes, sir, by the word of my testimony and the blood of Jesus, I will reign in life. I will overcome in life. Glory be to God, based off scripture text, amen? So now the, the keys of the kingdom, watch this, I'm about to give them to you. The keys of the kingdom are principles, their precepts, their laws, and their systems by which the kingdom functions. So what God is telling us, what he says in Matthew 16, 18, and 18, I'm going to give you all these keys of the kingdom of heaven. Not in the kingdom, because I'm already in the kingdom of the kingdom of heaven. So now I need to know the principles, the precepts, the laws. I need to know the system by which this kingdom functions. Now, if I can figure out how the kingdom functions, then I can have heaven on earth. Let's make this plain for you. You can have heaven in your household, in your life, in your body, every day, every 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365 days a year. Glory be to God. See, they don't teach you this in religion or in church per se. 
Now, this kingdom teaching right here, how God wants you and designed you to function inside of your life. Amen. The keys must be learned and applied. And that's the key. I got to learn them and I got to apply them. So that's why I must be a student, student learner. I got to learn. That's what a disciple is. I must learn. And then these must be applied by the citizen to appropriate the, the benefit and the privileges of the kingdom. If you want them, then you're going to have to learn them and apply them. Now, today you're getting, I'm you, you getting everything given to you because God has poured it into my life so I can pour it into your life. Amen. So the keys of God's kingdom are his instructions that are given in the B-I-B-L-E. Glory be to God. Amen. So this is not traditions of man. Amen. Basically, God is talking to us to tell us this is how you're going to get results in the life, in your life that lines up with the kingdom of heaven. That's the key. So knowledge leads to understanding. Now, once we, we know the principles behind the keys, we can understand how they work inside the kingdom. And that's going to be my focus today. And it's going to be a blessing to your life. And it's going to make your life so much better because you're going to get the clarity on how to function just like heaven. Amen. So these are God's secrets. Amen. So number one, the, the keys represent, a key represents authority. God says, don't give them to you. Now, I'm going to give you keys. Number one, you need to have an understanding. The key that God has given you represents authority, okay? If I possess a key to a place, it means I have authority in that place. It's called common sense. If I got a key, I have authority in the place for which the key. The key to your house means that uh, I have authority there. If you don't have a key to a house, that's what they call a break-in. You know what I'm saying? You know, you ain't got no business going in. That's why like it's illegal to enter a house without a key to unlock the door. The doors are locked. They're all secure. And if you come in there illegally, you have broken the government law. Amen. But if I have a key, everybody shot a key. But if I got that key, man, I can put that key in there, turn that thing. I'm legal. I have authority. I have access. Everybody shot access. I got the authority to come on in. The key to your car gives you authority to drive it wherever you want to go. If you don't have a key to it, got it? You have no other. If you kind of hotwire something, that means, you, you know, you, you, you ain't got the key. Got it? You have no authority. So Christ says, I'm giving you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. It's likewise the same way for your life. God said, I'm going to give you the key that's going to unlock authority. I need you to say authority. Going, this is key. This is key for your life. Amen. I'm giving you authority in heaven, the same authority that he has. That's powerful, y'all. you got to pay attention. This is power. God, God set us up here on earth. He set us up. He's, you, you cannot fail in the kingdom of God's system. You just can't fail. His government, his constitution, you cannot fail following this word. It's impossible because God cannot fail. So how can you follow him and fail? It's not possible. That's why he says, my word is a lamp unto your feet. Follow him. His word, God and his word are one of the two. They want, they're the same. So he said, you follow me, you can't fail. You can stumble, but you can't fail. Glory be to God, amen. So watch this now. Power, all the key does, the key, the key gives you the power, authority. Authority gives you the power to determine what is uh, uh, determine the right to control or determine your own destiny. That's what authority does. And you need to listen to this because I'm going to be able to break down your personal authority in just a moment. And you're going to be so happy that we did today. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Amen. So power is used to determine. That's what authority. Authority is the power to determine the right to control or determine your own destiny. Shall I have the right? Yeah, I have the authority, the power to determine or the right to control, watch this, or determine my own destiny. So that's not in anybody else authority or power. You have that power because God gave that authority to you. He didn't give it to anybody else. Every man God gives his own personal authority. This is a key. Child, it's a key. Amen? So when I look at this, and you look at the real definition, this power uh, to be who you really are. That's what God gave. God gave you the power to be who you really are. Oh, this is good. Got it? You have the right to determine your own future based on your inherent authority from the creator. Whatever he's giving you, he's giving you the power or authority to be your own self. 
Ooh. So what God is telling us is your future is on the inside of you. Your future is not in anybody else. Your future is on the inside of you. See, this is the power. This is the, one of the keys that he gave you for the kingdom. Because a lot of people believe that their power is in other folk. Other folk don't have anything to do with it. This power is inside of you. Your future is on the inside. We're looking on the outside of us for our future. You think your future is in a man. You think your future is in a woman. You think your, your future is in the education, the collegiate system, and all these other things. It's, no, it's in nobody else. Your future, God hid your future on the inside of you. When you came to earth, you came to earth with your future on the inside of you. And God hid you, your future, your destiny on the inside of you. So we look everywhere else but for our destiny. And we look every and everybody else. Give me a word. That's one of the biggest things in, in, in religious now, in the religious reforms. I got to go to a meeting because I got to get the word. Somebody's got to say, tell me something. You got to prophesy to me. You got to tell me something. And I'm not against Prophecy. What I'm trying to tell you is on the inside of you. You're looking for somebody else on the outside to tell you who you are, what your destiny has been defined. But God says, I put it on the inside of you. That's why God said, learn of me and I'll show you you and what I put on inside of you. Always remember in the Garden of Eden, God put man there and said, now go to work. I give you everything that you need. Now I need for you to discover what I put on the inside of you. Reveal you. Reveal the real you. So God hid that and put that on the inside of you. Your future is on the inside of you. But in order for you to learn and find out what that future is and what your destiny is, you must have that personal relationship with God. Because God said, I'm going to reveal it to you. But what you don't want to have is your own personal relationship with God. You want to kind of get it for somebody else. Pastor, tell me about me. Prophet, tell me about you. No, God says, I'll personally, with the Holy Ghost, will tell you of you. Don't need nobody to run, run, run interference for this one. But see, we always, because he's giving my own, your own personal authority. He said, I put, I hit it. I put the future on the inside of you. Amen. So God has given, uh, given you permission to be all you were born to be. God put it on the inside. Amen. So this is the extent of our authority. Got it? So in other words, you don't have authority to make someone else like you. You don't have that authority. Yeah. You don't have no authority to make somebody else like you or, or try to make yourself like somebody else. And that's what a lot of us do. We try to make ourselves like somebody else. Amen. You have authority only to make who you are, and that's it. I'm trying to help you today. Amen. Glory be to God. I'm trying to help you today. Amen. So there's benefits for living in your own personal authority, and I want to share some of those with you today. Number one, benefits you experience. As, as you exercise your personal authority. That's what it's talking about. The benefits. When I exercise my personal authority to be all that God says that I am on the inside of me, that is a key inside the kingdom of God because so many people are running around trying to be somebody else. Amen. So when God gives you this own personal authority, it allows us to, be, to have the freedom to be who we were created to be. Amen. In other words, number one, you are an original. You've heard Pastor Vanessa say that many times. You are an original. Everybody was born uh, 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 as, an, uh, as an original. That's it. Just you. That's why you can take all the thumbprints and fingerprints you want in life. There's nobody like you. Amen. Amen. But most people end up being copycats of somebody else. Why? Because you don't like you. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But God said, you understanding you have your own personal authority is a key inside the kingdom of God. Are oh, you listening to me today? Amen. So in this world, we have so many duplicates that it's hard to find an original really walking around. Amen. The normal people are really copycats of something, something else. Amen. So when you manifest your personal authority, you're not just a variation of someone else. You know who you truly are. Now, this is going to be one of the keys for your life to function. In your single state, forget a marriage state or any type of relationship state, if you don't have your state secure, understanding who you are, you are an original. You don't need to pretend nor be anybody else. Glory be to God. Just have that understanding. You are an original. Amen. Glory be to God. So there's only one of you. 
And you can make the most of you by expressing your unique design. Glory be to God. You have to be in love with yourself. Glory be to God. Amen. So not only do you, you need to understand you are an original to use your personal authority, but you must know that you have this what intrinsic. Uh, there's a thing in the business world called an ex, a, a twisted good or intrinsic good. The ex twisted good is the benefits brought on by ox, external factors. Intrinsic benefits are internal. It's an internal factor. In other words, these are the benefits I know that I bring to the table. Glory be to God. And this is what God is talking about. Amen. You must understand your significance. And your significance comes from your inherent personal authority and from the love of the one who made you, which is God. That's who you are. Are you listening to me? I'm pleading with you today on this one. Amen. Because you are aware of your intrinsic value. That God loves you so much. He gave up his only begotten son for you. That is your value. The value that the price that the price that God put on you. You, your value is not tied up in anything else. I don't care what they call you, what they say. And many people are not uh, uh, don't use their personal authority because of simple fit. And that's a key. That is a serious key because you don't understand your significance. You're more than that. Look at it like this. Vegas made it legal to sell your body. But I'm here to tell you today, you're more than that. You have your own personal authority. Glory be to God. I'm not going to let anybody determine my value. You didn't make me, so you don't have a right to determine my value. I don't care who it is. You're talking about who you love and all of a sudden. No, no, no. You don't get to determine my value. My value is only declared by the maker. My manufacturer is called God Almighty, the King of kings, the King of glory. Amen. So I don't let you, male or female, you don't let anybody else put a price tag on you. Glory be to God. Amen. Because you are aware. When you are aware of your value, I need you to listen to me now. I need you to listen to me because you got personal authority. Yeah. You got authority over your body, over your mind. Watch this. You got authority. Shall I got authority. So nobody else can determine my intuitive value. Are you listening to me? I understand my purpose. When you understand your value, you will, you will not succumb to uncertainties, watch this, about your worth. So nobody else can tell you your worth. You're not moved by what others, the uncertainty of others. What you said got nothing to do with it. I understand my value. Are you listening to me? See, you only bow down when you don't, under, you'll accept anything where you don't know your value. Glory be to God. Amen. That's why men and women in relationship will put up with any single thing because you don't understand and don't exercise your personal authority that my value is based on what God has paid for me. It got nothing to do. That's why your standards are so low. And I'm trying to raise you up as to the kingdom standard of government. Glory be to God. Understand, woman. Understand, man, who you are. Glory be to God. Amen. Stop selling for just anything. Glory be God. God sets the standard of your originality. Understand how he made you and how he made you to function. God never created you to settle. He created you with dominionship, which means, and that's why he said, in his righteousness, because in his righteousness, he has a standard. Everybody shout standard. Yeah. He's got a standard. And this standard is your standard. His righteousness. Not what you think. Glory be to God. Well, they, they treat me nice. Nice is not the standard, baby. The right, his righteousness is the standard. Glory be to God. Amen. Let me move on. I can get, get passionate about that. Let me move right along. Amen. So you need to understand, number one, I'm an original. I know my intrinsic value. I got the confidence of God. I know who I am. Watch this. The psalmist said, and he wrote it in his plan. Glory be to God. I know who I am. God wrote that thing in his plan. Amen. And then you must have genuine confidence. Everybody shout the confidence. Yeah, yeah, this is a key. This is key inside the kingdom of God, amen? Because you know you are authorized by the creator. Watch this. You move forward with confidence so that you're able to fulfill what you were born to accomplish on the earth. You're not afraid. Baby, I got the confidence. Whether I got to go by myself, whether I got to be alone, you know what I'm saying? Whatever it may be, I'll do what I need to do. But you're not going to bring all that hell into my life just because everybody else said you got to have a relationship. Glory be to God. That's your standard, but that's not my standard. I like 
Abraham in the Bible. I need you to listen to me. Adam didn't even know he needed a mate. God had to tell him he needed somebody. Glory be to God. See, you need to go back and check yourself and read the Bible from what the Bible said, not before religion has taught you because some pastor, somebody didn't read the Bible and told you something. You need to go back to the originality of what God said. Glory be to God. Adam didn't ask God for a woman. God brought a woman to him. Glory be to God. Glory. Amen. So this is the confidence that I have. I'm fully persuaded in who I am. I'm the head and not the tail. Above only, never beneath. I'm blessed when I go out, blessed when I come in. Glory be to God. Amen. Praise be to God. So I have genuine confidence. Amen. This is the thought that I have. You're not going to bring me down because this is the key inside the kingdom of heaven. How I'm going to function. I have dominion. That's what I'm saying. I got authority. I got dominion of how I'm going to feel. You cannot make me feel any way I don't want to feel. I have full control of all of my emotions. So what you're trying to come with will not work because I'm fully persuaded who I am. You can't make me feel down. You can't make me feel up. All you can be is be you, baby, but I determine everything that God said about me. The Bible says rejoice, and I say again, rejoice. So rejoicing is up to me. Glory be to God. Got nothing to do with you. You can withhold any and everything you want to because it ain't got nothing to do about you. The joy that I have, the world didn't give it to me. Are you in the world? So that means you can't bring me joy. If you're in the world, you can't bring me joy. Uh, I need to listen. This is how the kingdom of heaven functions. The world didn't give it to me, so the world can't take it away. So you need to stop and come in line, properly aligned with authority, so you have an understanding here. Uh-uh, baby, I like you and all that thing, but my joy is not in you. When the sunshine leaves me, I still got sunshine, because I am sunshine. You got to tell yourself, I'm sunshine, I like me, I don't know about you. Yeah, man, if you follow me long enough, you're going to love yourself, I promise you that, because I love me some me, and you ought to love you some you. Glory be to God. Amen. Get it up. Raise up the standard. Amen. This is how the kingdom of heaven functions on the inside of you. You have genuine confidence. Amen. Glory be God. And you are free. Oh, I'm going to get here somebody. You need to listen to this part. Do not leave right now. You are free. Watch this. When you have this personal authority, that's the key. Watch this. You are free from comparing yourself with others. Let me say that one more time because I don't think you hear that. You are free from comparing yourself with other folk. Uh -huh. Because you recognize you are distinct from all others. God made me. Hey, hey. I understand. Look, I'm different. I'm distinct from all others in my own authority. Glory be to God. I don't compare myself with anybody else. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. You don't keep checking your progress in life. That's what folks do. Most folks check their progress in life in relationship to others. They got a measure still. What the Jones is doing. Well, let me see what, where I'm at. And you either feel bad or good depending on what you're comparing yourself against. You have lost your own personal authority and you have lost the key inside the kingdom of God. He never told you to compare yourself with another. Oh my God. Listen to me. Never told you to do that. Glory be to God. So your I'm not judging while I'm ahead or behind by your standards. My standard is predicated on my purpose, what God put in the original me. That's what I'm looking at. Glory be to God. My success is based off the potential that God placed on the inside of me. That's the only standard I'm judging myself by. I'm judging myself by what God had given, what purpose he has for my life. And what I have accomplished, it's based off the word of God. That's my standard. My standard's not you. You would lower my standard, but my standard's based off the word of God. Glory be to God. Amen. And that's how many folk, listen, with marriage, get in trouble. You sitting around there, you going around your ear, and you been listening to all the religious folk. Oh, baby, when you, when you going to get married? When you going to give me some grandkids? When you going to do this? When you going to do that? Because that's the world standard. Glory be to God. They have you summoned for anything. Glory be to God. You have little Rico, little Shanae, you have yourself in a big mess. Because you, you, you kind of compare yourself against your classmates and your family mates and all these other folk. Glory be to God. That's not the standard. 
The, the standard is what God said. And the woman, a man of God you want is found in Genesis 1 and 2. You do not get a man or woman of God after Genesis chapter 2. If you get in it all, you have messed up from God's original plan. And that was free. I'm counseling for you today. Praise be to God. Glory to God. Hey, glory to God. Amen. So, watch this. I don't keep checking my progress in a relationship to others, judging whether I'm ahead or behind based off the I don't care about that. Amen. And so what happens is, I don't compare. I gotta compare myself with another. That's what most pastors do. Oh God, oh Jesus, I ain't wanna go. But listen, what am I supposed to do? Uh, how, many, how, how many members you got? What? What they gotta do anything? I've heard it in, in, in my field as a pastor. How, how many members you got? What they gotta do, pastor in China? What they gotta do anything, bro? What the insinuation is, your li their lifestyle that they have is based off of how many members they got. That's religion. Far away from the word of God. Far away from the word of God. You're limiting, watch this, what you can have in life by your membership number. Because in their belief system, their comparison, the more members they got, the more they're going to give, the more I'm going to have. Wrong theology, brother. Wrong theology. You having is based off you being in seeking first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. That's the standard. <laughs> oh, glory be to God. That's the standard. It ain't nobody else. Ain't got that. Your lifestyle ain't got nothing to do with a member. It's, it's just based off you and God. Oh, you better stay with me. You're going to learn something. Amen. And the last one I want to talk about right in this, in this, in this session called my time. Yeah, my time looks good. Watch this now. You are free from jealousy. See, we're not exercising my personal authority. I'm original. I understand who I am. I understand the purpose I created. And God's given me, this is all about God giving me dominion of the power of authority over comparing myself. Me being jealous of anything. This is a key inside the kingdom of God. Because they told you, you, you can't help it. That's a lie. How you, what, you, what you mean? You can't help it. That's not found in the Bible. Dominionship proves that you can have power over it. So the Bible said, watch this now, since you have intuitive value, internal, and I'm distinctive, watch this now, I am free from competition and comparison. I got to compete with nobody. Glory be to God. Watch this, watch this. But since I, I don't compete with nobody and I don't compare with nobody, watch this, I don't have to be jealous of anybody. I'm going to let that sink down one moment because you need to learn that. Because I understand who I am, I am the original. I am, I got the confidence God told me out to have in my personal authority. I got control of all of that. I don't have to compete nor compare myself with anybody else. In other words, I ain't got to feel jealous of anybody else. If other people can do certain things better than you can, this doesn't make you feel like you're a second mate. They're just better at that. But you're better than them and other stuff. But I'm not competing. I'm not comparing. And I don't have to get jealous because somebody's better at something than me. I can't sing a lick. Not one lick. A lot of people can, can, can preach better than I can. They can teach better than I can. Praise be to God. God bless you, man. I, I, God bless you, woman, man of God. God bless you. Praise be to God. Ain't got nothing to do with me. I am not jealous. I'm going to applaud you on your way. Because we are in the same fight, man, in the kingdom of God. Trying to help folks do so much better and enjoy full dominionship in their life. God bless you. See? I don't get jealous. I don't care if you got 50,000 members. What do I don't get jealous for? I'm always going to have two members. Always, always. Myself and Pastor and I got two. I'm good. I'm cool. Always. God bring more praise be to God. Amen. But watch it. I can't get, I'm not going to get jealous of anybody else. But watch this now. Why? Because I'm original. You know what I'm saying? And what God has for them is their business. Got nothing to do with me. Got it? I can do, look at it like this. You, you got to understand that according to the way the creator designed the world, everyone's authority complements, complements one another. We all fit jointly together accomplishing the things that God wants to accomplish. Are you listening to me? So I got, so what I understand on this, that, 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 that's, his, that's his domain, his authority. He, he, you do him. You do you. But you have yours. You got it? So I'm learning something. 
Everybody shot keys. So one of the first keys that we talked about today, I know I spent more time on it, is keys represent authority. So I have authority. So in other words, I can be able to make sure that my life, my personal authority, in line with the word of God, but see, I'm not, I'm not, I have power over how I'm going to feel, what I'm going to do. I, I have this authority. This is not in somebody else's hands. They're not pushing anything off on me. Are you listening to me? Amen. So I got to understand the authority that I have. The second key, uh, 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 keys represent, is access. Can you shout access? Yeah. Keys give you instant access uh, to everything that the key opens. If somebody gives you a key, that key is only good for what it opens. God says, I gave you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. So the key that God gave you, number one, was my was the authority. Now, God also says, not only authority, but I'm going to give you access, son. Oh, this is good. This is good. He's going to give you what? Access. The secret in knowing what the key opens, that's what God says I'm, I'm going to give to you. The keys of the, of the kingdom of heaven give us immediate access to all the resources of heaven. I need you to hear me. Write that down. These keys of heaven gives you immediate access to all the resources of heaven. Oh. See, you, you've, been, you've been too busy uh, looking, at, uh, looking at your business, looking at your bank account. Uh, you've been looking at other folks, you know, that owe you or something like that. You've been looking different ways to, to try to make something happen. That's what you've been looking at. But God has given you the key to access all the resources in heaven. Now, remember now, the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. So what God is telling you, son, daughter, that all the resources that you're seeking, that's why he says in Matthew 6, 30, seek ye first the what? Kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things should be added unto you. So he says, you have the key to access any resource in heaven, but you keep looking on earth. Watch it. Listen to me. You must have a kingdom mindset that completely changes your perspective. Philippians 2 and 5, listen to it. Philippians 2 and 5. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. Because if you don't get your mind right, you'll never have a kingdom mindset. So you're looking at the world. You got the world mindset. You're looking at the world for your resources. And God says, yep. Mm -mm. The next key is access. You have access to all the resources. Whatever you see on earth came from heaven, and I'm going to give you access to where all the stuff on earth came from. Hmm. So if you don't see anything on earth or don't have, but it's in heaven, he said, now whatever you declare uh, lawful down here is lawful up there. So I, in order for you to bring it down, you got to declare it, and it's going to come down to you. You have the resources, but you're in stress. You got the resources, but you're in dis distress. You're in distress, but you got resources. Now, let's prove this. Got it? 2 Kings 6. 2 Kings 6. We'll start at verse number 15. I'm going to show you this. You got to see it in Scripture. Now, watch this now. The servant of the man of God uh, got up early and went out. This is Elijah. And behold, there was an army of horses and chariots encircling the city. Elijah's servant said unto him, Oh, no, my master, uh, what are we to do? Elijah answered, Do not be afraid for those who are with us. They was encamped around. All he could see that uh, he could see was all the other army of surrounding them. He could see nothing else. But he goes to Elijah and said, Master, you know, what we're going to do? We surround them. They're about to take us out. Do you have a situation in life that looks like it's going to take you out? Elijah answered, do not be afraid of those who are with us. Because they were looking at how many people they were looking at. Now, he got hundreds of thousands. We got a thousand. You know, in the natural, that, that don't look good. Got it? Elijah says, don't be afraid. For those who are with us are more than those with them. Then Elijah prayed and said, Lord, please open his eyes. Not Elijah's eyes, but open his eyes. Elijah said, already see it. But open his eyes that he may see. His spiritual eyes. And the Lord opened the servant's eyes and he saw. 
And behold, the mountain was full of horses and chariots of fire surrounding Elijah. And when they came down to him, Elijah prayed to the Lord and said, please strike these people with blindness. And God struck them with blindness in accordance with Elijah's request. Here's the key. Elijah's servant was frightened but by what he saw around him. But he didn't have a key. That was the catch. He didn't have the key to the kingdom. He couldn't see it because he didn't have the key. Everybody shout access. That's why the world can't see things and they spaz about the things that you're going through, but you don't, they break down and you break through. Why? Because they, they don't have the key. I have the key. I've learned not to break down because I found out I got a key. I have a key which gives me access that others don't have. Listen to me now. So Elijah had a key that unlocked heaven and brought down an angelic host to protect them. That was all the chariots that he saw on the mountaintop. But because he had the key, he can call on what was in heaven and brought it down here on earth. But see, his servant can see it because he didn't have the key. I keep telling you, everybody don't have the key. You got to be a disciple to have the key. You're the church to call that one. Glory be to God. A student, a learner. And you got the key. When you have the keys of the kingdom, you have no lack. You have no crisis problem because the king is greater than it all. He couldn't see it because he didn't have a key. Glory be to God. Are you listening to me today? So, number one, the, the keys represent authority. Number two, the keys represent access that others don't have. And I think I got time to explain one more. And the keys represent ownership. I need you to hear me today. The keys represent ownership. Oh, you better listen to me. It represent ownership. Possession of a key gives you uh, what we call the, the factor or ownership of whatever the key opens. Oh, you, oh God. you got ownership when the key's open. So if God gave you kingdom of heaven, open it up. Whatever God has, you have. Oh, you need to listen to this. You need to listen. Whatever God has, you have. Therefore, we possess the keys of the kingdom on earth will be bound in heaven. He said, now, whatever you bound here on earth will be bound in heaven. And whatever you loose in earth, in earth will be loose in heaven. In other words, this is what God's telling us today. You own on earth whatever's going on in heaven. So whatever's going on in heaven, I own it because I get to bring it down here on earth. This means that you should never judge your life by what is, go what is going simply by your circumstance. I don't let my circumstance define my life. No, 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 no. I do not allow what? My circumstance, watch this, to define my life. Because whatever's going on down here, okay, but what's going on up there? Whatever I find out's up there and I declare unlawful down here, I'm going to get rid of it and replace it with what's going on in heaven in a lot of time. Get a Lord hand praise today, man. I got to finish this up. I'm telling you, I'm not going to be able to finish this thing up until uh, uh, on Wednesday night. We'll pick it up. God bless you, man. But I had to want to make sure that today, because my time, my time got away from me. Amen. Praise be to God. But when you get to teaching the word of God, I found out, man, I get locked in. Listen, get locked in. Now, I'm going to pray for you. And then I think Pastor Vanessa's coming back. She's going to be able to, to close us out today. But I'm going to take this moment in time just to pray with you. Just for a moment. Now, this word that you're finding out, that getting access to these keys today, they're vitally important for your life. You find out today, man, I, I got I got access. But God is telling you that, listen, you got promises, you got privileges, you got access, you got guarantees inside the kingdom of God. You just need to have the key. And God said, I gave them to you, but God, what's those keys for? That's what we've been talking about today. In him, he's showing you how to use those keys. And that's all I'm really doing. So that you can function in your life the way God de designed you to function. So that your life will be so special. And you experience all the things that God wants you to experience. It's amazing. And I'm telling you, when I found out these principles, these precepts, and these laws, it changed my life. Made my life so much better. And that's why we're sharing this with you, man. I said, God, whatever you teach me, whatever you show me, I'll make sure I show all your people. I've lived these things. I'm not telling you about things that I don't know nothing about. I'm living it. I've lived it. I'm living it. I use these same principles 
and these laws and these, these keys every day of my life so that I can function at my ultimate level. And that's all God's doing. Head to my eyes are closed. Saints are playing all of the doing. Now, Father, I thank you. This is the time. This is the moment for your people. And I know you're crying out just like Nicodemus wanted to know, what must I do to get inside the kingdom of God? And that's what we're echoing. That's what we're, we're praying for today. You ask the question as you go out and you share with everybody on this earth. I want to share with you. And I'm reaching out to you. I'm appealing to you right now. If you want to enter inside the kingdom of God today, and you say, no, 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 I got to get access to this kingdom. There's only one way to do it. You must make Jesus Lord in your life. You got to confess with your mouth, Jesus. I got to confess that, that Jesus died for me. And on the third day, God rose with him from the dead. All power with his hand. He did it. That's your choice. You got to believe in your heart and confess with your mouth. I can't do that for you, but that's something you must do. And you will inherit the kingdom of God. And you'll walk right on in. This is God to do. It's a reborn. It's a spiritual birthing that you must do. And I want to give you that opportunity. Simple prayer. So, Father, I confess the Lord Jesus Christ. Yes. Come into my life. I was for lost, but God, you're making me whole. I want to come in today. So I confess with my mouth, with my mouth, the Lord Jesus Christ, and I believe that God raised him for the dead. It's because of that, my friends, that you are now saved and made whole. Oh, yes, you are. It's simple. It's simple. You're in the kingdom of God. It's not by, it's not by feeling anything like that. It's by faith that you've done these things. I promise you that God's done inside your life. So thank God for you today. My second appeal for others that, uh, that used to be inside the kingdom of God, but somehow you got tricked. You fell off. The good news is you can get up, young man. Young lady, you can get up. I'm appealing to you today. God can do anything. You heard it. He, he can do anything. He'll change that. The psalmist said anything can happen in here. He's talking about you. He's not talking about no. He's talking about in you. He'll do it. I confess. God, I ask for forgiveness for my sin. You name that sin. I'm appealing to you. I want to return to goodness in my life. But God, I confess my sin to you today. God says, I'll forgive you and I'll clean you for all of righteousness. One thing about the prophet David that made him so amazing that God calls him a man after his own heart. He said, God, one of the def uh, uh, things confess means to agree with God. David says, I agree. I've sinned against you, God. I agree. I'm not going to argue with you. I agree. That's confession. Not, not, not what other folks do, that they believe in the Catholic Church. A confession is, I, just, I don't argue with God. I just believe you, God. What you said is right. I confess. He's not talking about talking to anybody else. He's talking about confess. But you were wrong. That's all it is. And God will return to you home. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for your people. It's very dynamic for their lives. And I pray that your life is getting so much better. I'm telling you, your life, you don't even understand what's happening your life is getting so much better because of this anointed word. And God bless them today. Uphold them with your strong arm and watch their lives be so much better. And I give you praise. I give you glory. In Jesus' name. Can everybody shout amen? All right. God bless you. Amen. Well, it's been a pleasure. Amen. I'm getting ready to turn you over to Pastor Vanessa, who's going to take you on in. Amen. God bless you. I look forward to seeing you on Wednesday. We now have Pastor Vanessa. Amen. Praise the Lord. I mean, what an awesome word. Come on, we're one praise from our breakthrough. Come on, can you put your hands together and give Pastor Grimsley a big praise this morning? Come on, put those hands together and give him a praise this morning. Come on, the word of God was rich. It was right on time. I don't know about you, but I needed that word. I needed that. Come on, you're just one praise. One praise from your breakthrough. You're just one praise. Don't let anybody rob you of your praise. Don't let anybody rob you of your breakthrough. You're just one praise from your breakthrough. Amen. A nugget that I want to leave with you today from Pastor Grimm's teacher this morning. He was talking about the keys. Keys give us access. Keys give us, give us, uh, it give us, grant, it grant us access to the kingdom, to the things of God. So this morning you ought to ask yourself, do I have keys? 
Do I have my own set of keys? Because somebody else's keys doesn't give me access. Somebody else's keys don't fit my blessing. The thing that God has for me is on my keys. Come on. It's on my keys. He made me the original with my own keys, with my own access. So you need your own keys this morning. This morning when you have your keys, come on, with keys. You ought to tell yourself, with keys, there is no limits. There is no losses. There is no lacks. Come on. Because with God, all things are possible. So this morning, do you have your keys? Come on. You ought to walk around every day with your keys around your neck. God, I got access. I got immediate access to the things of God. He said that when you pray, he hears you when you pray. And it can, anything can happen. Come on. I'm expecting God. I'm expecting God to do something awesome for you today. For you and your household. For you this morning. Come on, get your keys. Get your keys. Don't live in the mediocre. Live in the above. Live in the above. Something good is about to happen. Woo! Come on. There's a, there's a presence in this room today. The Spirit of the Lord is in this place. Come on. Woo! Miracles, miracles, miracles. Come on. He's doing it right now for you. Right now. While you sitting there, you may have tears rolling down your face. Your hands may be lifted toward heaven or your heart may be pounding real fast. He's doing it for you. You got to work it out for your own self. Come on. You ought to tell yourself, breakthrough is about to happen for me. He's getting ready to change some of y'all zip code. He's getting ready to change some of y'all zip code. He's getting ready to change some of y'all environments. Come on. If you will let him, he's going to do it for you. Some of you, come on. You've been waiting. You've been faithful. You've been standing. He's about to blow your mind. A financial breakthrough about to happen just for you. Come on. You say, God, I trust you. And anything can happen when you allow God. Because he gives you, when you got keys, when you made him Lord and Savior of your life, he gives you these keys. I want to leave that with you today. I'm Pastor V on behalf of Pastor Gramsley. We say thank you for joining us here at Faith Victory Christian Center. God bless you today. We want you to have an amazing week next week. We'll see you on Wednesday night at 7 o'clock. Go with God and God will go with you. Amen. Bye-bye.